This is the 1927 Model T Coupe that I've been building. I'm sure a lot of you seen it. Uh, a lot of you like it. Um, it's very different in the aspect of really what it is. Uh, as you can see, it's got big ass tires in the back, big ass tires in the front. It's kind of an homage to the Beck Customs F-132. Um, currently the one that Ricky Bawada owns. Um, so that's kind of like what I've been going for. Except his is a Model A. That one's a Model A concept. This is a Model T, which, you know, it's got different lines. It's smaller. It's got a flat roof. Um, doesn't have that curve in the back, how the Model A's do. Um... What else? What else? So yeah, so basically the the one that Ricky Boata has, it's kind of the same concept of what I've been going for. That's why I got this car. I've been wanting to do one like that. And I started back in January on this car. And here we are now, almost to be September, and full rolling chassis. Everything's pretty much in there. I have to do back here. I'm going to kind of do eh, kind of a Mike's uh, stance works kind of how his Model A truck has the fuel cell and everything back here. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to put the trunk back on. Um, I did this four link. So as you can see, it's a tri four link on a nine inch rear end. It's got posi. I think it was like three. 320 something 323 gears or something like that. You know, whatever. It's still on drum brakes uh, But eh, it'll get the job done. It'll burn both tires which sucks because those are so expensive um, But yeah, so try four link that I built uh, You know weld it all in it's all good. It's all square um, just some basic speedway coilovers uh, I forget what the spring rating is on those but I mean it's it's it it's in there it's pretty stiff um i guess one of the other things is i guess the chop the chop is insanely heavy i mean if you look at it uh, that's the chop i mean you know i got a pretty big hand it's about half my hand not going to be much visibility back here though because I am going to be doing a wing, not exactly like Ricky's, but I will be doing a wing. Just don't know what it'll look like or anything like that. Um, you can still see we still have to like finesse the chop here. So it is, um, what is it? Uh, yeah, there's still a little bit of body work to do, but whatever. It's a 10 inch chop in the front, 11 inch in the rear. So it's one of the heavier chopped Model T's out there. Um, I mean, you can see that there's not a lot of headroom, you know. Floors, floors are gonna be just about, you know, mm, I forget what it was, three quarters of an inch above the frame rail. So, you know, I lose a three quarter of an inch headroom. I'm 6'3", I think, something like that. Um, but I'll fit in here no problem. Um, I've already sat in it. And, you know, my pedals can probably go somewhere up here. Uh, you know, that should be, that should work fine. Uh, what else, what else? So yeah, heavy chop, still need to do the floors. I'm in the process of uh, mounting the transmission right now. Um, that can be a bit of a pain, but eh, it's getting there. Um, but yeah, it's a full, full custom chassis. Um, my friend Eddie, uh, Eddie Wreck, he built the chassis in the first place, which all it is is two by three tubing. Um, he built it in the first place, but I had to cut it in half at the front. If you can see over there and over there. I had to cut it completely off in half. This way, 
I can fit the grand marquee front end that I threw under it. So, yeah, it fits like a charm. The engine and tranny are in. Uh, engine's in permanently. I still got to mount the tranny. Um, I believe that is the grill that uh, grill shell that I'm going to use. These might be the headers that I use, but I might have to kind of pie cut them a little bit and either bring them back or upward because almost about full lock it touches the headers, but that's because it's so low right now. If I raise, the car's going to be, it's, it's laid out on the frame. If you can see, it's sitting on a frame. And that's because, well, a lot of people are asking me, oh, why is it cambered? Why has it got that stupid stance? If you can tell, it's got Stancy Boy up front. And that's because I just took out the struts. And it's an independent front suspension, so you get stupid camber, blah, 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 whatever. So I still got to make my mounts for the coilovers. Um, and then, you know, it'll go back in the the factory place, but it'll all be in here. Um, and it won't be too high off the ground. I think it's gonna still have ridiculous amounts of camber. Um, Cause shoot, I mean, if you look at that compared to the rear tire, it's still gonna have camber, which sucks. Um, there's ways to correct it and still keep it low. But for now, you know, the tires, these tires anyways, these are 285s. I got them 40 bucks used. Um, you know, if I go through them, which won't be too often because this is going to be kind of a track rat. Um, I'm going to use it at the track all the time. Once it's done, it's going to kind of replace my coronet while my coronet gets worked on and my, my Etzel gets worked on. Um, before the... Meantime, I'm only going to be taking it to the track, and you know, a little bit of camber is okay for one coming into turns and all that. It's not going to be a drag car or nothing like that. Um, that's why I got the big meats front and back. It's going to be a cornering car. That's why I put the tri link in the back. I'm going to do sway bars. Um, the factory marquee sway bar will still bolt to this. I just got to make a mount up front where the D bushings go, so that'll be easy. Um, but as far as that, it'll have, it has power rack and pinion right now. Um, little things to be hooked up, but, you know, it'll have stiff coilovers. Um, and it'll be made to handle. I mean, yeah, it's kind of stupid when you think about it because I don't have much visibility. I'm not going to have much visibility out of this thing. I mean, if you can kind of justify that, I guess you can see better back here but that's not a lot of window to look out of neither are the doors the doors are chopped too so i guess that's okay but it's not very practical but it's going to be super lightweight the motor is a built 283 um it's got pop-up pistons race cam um Ported heads, uh, I think they were the camel hump heads or something of their time. They're actually really good. This motor was really good. Um, it'll be a good RPM motor. That's why I got this motor, is because it's already built, everything's already done. I like keeping the high RPM at the track. And the idea of this build was F1 car Basically the Beck Customs, which is F1 car meets hot rod, rat rod. And F1s, the old F1s, they revved really high. Well, this can potentially be, it'll be about a 7600 RPM motor. You know, obviously with a little bit more top end work. Um, maybe a dry sump in the future, if it survives. I could probably spin it to about 8, you know, hopefully... That's reasonable with this. So a lot of what people ask me about are the uh, the rims. People people love the rims on this thing. They are 
the Black Rhino Arsenals. They're 20 by 12 front and back. Um, it's negative 44 millimeter on the offset, so it's stupid sunk in. Um, I don't remember. It's like a 7 inch lip or something like that. Uh, so it's deep front and back, but I needed that for the, the way that this thing was going to sit. This thing is about as wide, maybe about as wide as a dually. I mean, it's, it's pushing a, a good, you know, lane, uh, on, the, on your local streets or something like that. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be good. I, I think it'll be good. Um, These wheels, they're, they're newer Mopar pattern, which is 5.5, five. so 5.5 five front, 5.5 five five back, which this, the 9 inch is a 4.5, um, the Grand Marquis is a 4.5, um, but obviously I got some adapters for those. Um, and I've been using adapters, my Dodge has adapters on it, that's why it's so stupid wide, um, and it pokes out so far. Same size wheels. Um, these back here are 305s. Um, that's what I had laying around. The plan was to use something bigger, something wider, and I can, which is great for the future. But for now, these tires were... I had the two backs laying in my backyard because they were spares for my Dodge, uh, my track car. Um, I wasn't using them. You know, I could have probably used them, but... I wanted to see this thing on the ground and kind of get a visual of how wide and, and low it was going to be. Um, and yeah, I mean, this this thing is 10 times better than what it used to be with the stupid chintzy little Mer Mercury Grand Marquis wheels. But damn, this, you know, it set it off. And I love it. I love it. I love the wheels were the first thing I bought for this car. So the wheels were kind of what I built the car around. And I like them because they look like a modern steely. It's just a huge, deep, modern steely to me. You know, and they are heavy. They are made out of, out of, out of alloy. But they just fit the look of the car. It's got a retro look to it, even though it's a modern wheel. But, yeah, so, eh, just a little bit about that car. Uh, it's just time, time and money. These headers, my buddy Eddie had laying around, so um, they're just old gasser style headers, but you know, they kind of make the look of the car kind of makes it look mean. I like them, but as far as if I'll be able to turn, you know, that's a different story. Um, I mean, we turned the wheel, but at full lock, I'm going to need to be able to turn. And it does rub the headers a little bit, so we'll see what happens with that. But other than that, I mean, it's all right. It's just, you know, it, it's a typical cheap budget car. Um, like how any rat rod is. Uh, it's just done in a different flavor. I, Especially with the independent front, you know, I mean, I've seen hot rods with the Mustang 2 stuff. And I, that's what I was going to do with this car, but I found a marquee front end and, you know, it's just, I can't do the single leaf axle thing with the, with the hot rods. I like cars that handle, uh, I've been time attacking, auto crossing, um, you know, track days. I've been doing it for years now and I actually host my own auto cross time attack track day stuff at our local track, um, courtesy of Dan Brockett. He's the one that lets me do all that. So it's a great way for me to test the the, the rigidity, you know, of a chassis, um, how well the things will handle. I get to tune my car. I get to spend as much time as I want at the racetrack. So this thing is going to be dialed because my Dodge is as flat as a table going around the corner. You know, it may not be the most horsepower, but it's the most... I like suspension. I like tuning suspension. Uh, that's kind of like what I've been based around. You know, horsepower is cool. You know, I would love to have more horsepower, but at the end of the day, I like a car that handles really well. And this is what this is going to be. 
Maybe it could be a 400 horsepower motor, maybe. I don't know. I'll dyno it and, you know, show you guys. But as far as horsepower, it's not going to be the greatest. It doesn't have the, the cubic inch. doesn't have the torque, you know. It's, it's just meant to be this radical little thing that's supposed to live at a high RPM. Um, uh, what else? It's got a turbo 400, but it's a Buick 400. So I had to get adapters to adapt it to the Chevy um, bell housing because they're different. If you can see, there's a split in the middle. I mean, a lot of you people that know Buick, they're you know still GM, but they're so different from what everything else is. Um, so I had to get an adapter plate, had to get a specific flex plate, um, for this to even work and uh this, the back here is different too so i bought an aftermarket 400 mount and none of them work that's the 27t coupe that you've kind of been seeing floating around um you know if anybody wants to know anything else or whatever or if you guys want me to post more videos of me working on it i can do that it doesn't matter to me um but yeah I mean, it's just me working on it by myself, um, which is great. It's a learning experience, you know. Um, my friend Eddie, this is his shop. He's been pointing me in the right direction as far as, like, he's been showing me, you know, new things with what to do, what I could do, you know, if I have something I have a question about, you know, if I can't physically see it done or whatever, you know, he's kind of been there to help out. Um, but as far as... The car goes, you know, I've been doing, been doing everything myself, you know, so, um, it's a, it's gonna be fun, I can't wait till it's done, it's, it's almost done, really, um, little things here and there, but, yeah, in time, in time, so, anyways, thanks guys, appreciate it, um, almost at 1,000 subscribers, or followers, I guess you should say, um, you know, if we could get there, that'd be great. Uh, thank you to all the pages that have shared this thing. You know, so far everybody's been loving it, and I think that's why people are going to stick around, because it's so different. Nobody really cares too much about my Dodge. My Dodge is, meh, it's kind of just pieced together, thrown together, whatever. I beat on it. It's ugly and disgusting, whatever. But I think a lot of people will stick around for this, and thank you guys for that. Um, but yeah. I try to post as much as I can. I try to work on this thing as much as I can. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys want to see. If you guys want to know more about it or, you know, have videos with me working on it. But cool. Uh, catch you guys later, taters.